Chapter 34 Home Allie lay in her hospital bed watching the dark storm clouds building outside her window. Her arms and chest still ached. A tray of food sat next to her, half eaten. She felt sick, only not from her injuries. The patter of raindrops hitting the window was the only soothing sound in the room. She remembered the first time she watched the rain in Asphodel. She sat in the living room of Sim and Otto's home, watching the drops wash over the flowers in the garden, just before Otto told her she was going on her first adventure with Sim. She remembered the fear so vividly. That definitive moment when she had left everything behind to dive head first into the biggest series of adventures of her life. And now no one would ever believe her. Allie looked up at the television. The newscaster talked about the growing crisis overseas as a video played of the never-ending restlessness and drama which filled her world. Rioters smashed windows while police and soldiers moved in with armored cars, trying to control the situation. She could only question what would cause people to riot so violently in comparison to the lost and grief-stricken travelers she had left behind. Allie couldn't help but wonder, did any of her adventures really happen? Or was it just all in her head? Did Sim know the way home all along? Had a lifetime of wanting to see the outside world and a passionate love for history tricked her imagination while she laid in a city street? Her own questions caused her to feel even more sick on top of the guilt of thinking she left everyone behind. She spotted the nurses talking in the hallway outside her room. She looked away as she spotted a pair of blue and brown marble eyes looking at her from the shadowed corner of the window. Allie looked back at the window and blinked. There was no one there. Allie stared at the window, afraid that her mind was now playing tricks on her. She had been longing to see Sim walk in the door to her room at any moment. Then she would know she wasn't crazy and hadn't imagined everything out of desperation to escape her mundane world. She wanted him so badly, she was seeing him out of the corner of her eye. The hospital room door opened. She looked over, ready to see Sim's face, ready to rejoice in her sanity. She sank into disappointment. It was David, holding a bundle of flowers with the tag still on them. Allie sighed and looked back out the window. Hey, baby, said David in a polite tone, closing the door behind himself. Allie ignored him, watching the rain. I found some yellow flowers down at the shop. I know how much you love yellow, so I bought them for you. Red, said Allie, still looking out the window. What? Red. I like the color red. Not that it matters to you. Yellow, red, what's the difference? I still bought you flowers, didn't I? David set the flowers down on the table next to her. Still the same, David. Unable to tell the difference between your left foot and your right hand. Luckily, life didn't make you a woman, or you'd get more than just that mixed up. They didn't have red. He said to her in his standard, aggravated tone as he walked to the end of the bed. I didn't have to come, you know. That would have been nice. Yet, you're here now, so what do you want? Allie finally looked over at him. Nothing. I just wanted to know that you were okay. Because I care about you, babe. Would you please stop calling me that? I'm not your babe, and I'm not your baby. We aren't together anymore. Allie eyed David's slicked back hair, combed smooth with his oily hair gel. You say that, but you know that's not true. David, I'd gladly go stand in front of another bus to prove it. David scowled at her, then sighed as he sat down in the chair near the window. Allie glared at him, feeling increasingly irritated by his presence. You've changed since the last time I saw you. David looked curiously at her. You're more defensive 
than usual? Most people are always trying to change for the better, unlike you. Allie closed her eyes, blocking out the unwelcome view. I've changed, said David. I've had a lot of time to work things over, and if you just give me another chance, I could show you. Wow, I'm hit by a bus, and now you're using it as a way to try and smooth talk me into getting back together. <laughs> you couldn't just come down here and drop off flowers and walk away. You're so predictable. Hey, I came because I care about you. Not to get back together. Like I said, I've changed. You still seeing Sophia? Allie's eyes narrowed. She's just a friend, said David. So, you are still seeing her. <laughs> Obviously, you haven't changed that much. Either that, or my definition of someone being a friend is vastly different from yours. We're not- The door to the room opened. David fell silent as Allie's dad walked in. His hair had grown short and white, and his beard finely trimmed to its standard perfection. David stood up from his seat. Allie smiled at her dad, overwhelmed by the joy of seeing him walk in the room. Allie's father gave David a cold glare through his glasses. Mr. Claude? Said David, extending a handshake. Hello, David. Allie's father replied with a stern voice as he shook his hand. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'd like to talk to my daughter alone, if you don't mind. David looked over at Allie for a moment with a torn expression. Allie's dad held the door open for him. David kept his eyes on her as he stepped out of the room. Allie and her father heard a sudden crash come from the hallway, as though someone had fallen into a cart of medical supplies. Allie leaned over in her bed to see David being helped up onto his feet by a man in a blue nurse's uniform. David brushed the nurse off and threw his hands down in anger. Allie's father closed the door with raised eyebrows. Keep your plague-infested hands off me! Oh my Don't God, touch I'm me! So sorry. Looks like you had a pest problem that needed taken care of. Allie's father said with a smile. Allie laughed at him and began pulling the blankets off her lap, ready to get out of bed to hug her dad. Her dad hurried over to her, stopping her from getting up. No, 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 no. Stay in bed, sweetheart. You look like you played chicken with a bus, Bart. Didn't I tell you never play in traffic? <laughs> hey, Dad. Allie replied as she reached out to hug him. Her dad leaned down and held her close to his chest. Hey, Spark. I'm glad you're okay. I thought I'd never see you guys again for a little while there. Said Allie, looking up at her dad. You're lucky to be alive. They say that bus looked like it hit you dead on. Yeah. Fate had other plans for me, thankfully. How did you guys get here so quickly? Your mother and I got a call yesterday evening while I was at the hospital. Booked the next flight out for the night and got here early this morning. Strange thing was, we got a second call while we were at the airport saying it had just happened. The paramedics must have forgotten to mark down that they had already called us. Well, I'm glad you're here, Dad. Allie said. Where's Mom? Pestering the lady at the desk, making sure you're being taken care of properly. Before we leave, I'll be sure to let them know not to let David come around again. Please. He showed up at the accident last night, too. <coughs> Has he been following you? Asked her dad. The details of the accident came flooding back into Allie's mind. She remembered the man in the blue cap who had chased her. It must have been David. Although, it wasn't his style to follow her from the shadows. He was more of a brash acting, run in begging for forgiveness kind of guy. No, he's stopped recently. Today was the first time in a while. He was trying to use the accident as a reason for us to get back together. Your mom wouldn't argue. She set out on a mission to get you back together. I think she just wants you to marry somebody already. Yeah, we argued about it over the phone at work a few weeks ago. Or I guess it was only yesterday. I told her as long as you're with a young man who takes care of you, keeps you safe, and makes you happy, he's always good in my book. Her dad sounded like he had described Sim word for word. No one had made her feel safer or happier in her life. She remembered the moment they had shared just before she left, standing in front of the ark as they kissed for the very last time. 
even in his darkest moment, he had done what he had to, to keep her safe, putting her before himself. You would have loved to meet Sam in that case, said Allie. Sam, so you have been seeing someone else, laughed her dad. Why isn't he here with you? Allie took a deep breath, trying to fight back her heartache. He's... Now, for the first time in years, I have something I care about that's worth saving again. Gone. Or, at least I think he is. He works a lot and lives pretty far away. You should give him a call and tell him what happened. If he cares, I'm sure he'd fly back as soon as he could. Said Allie's dad, eyeing the flowers on the table. No, he's gone for good, it seems. Allie tugged on her hospital bracelet wishing she still had her bracelet from Alexander. Well, any man dumb enough to leave my daughter high and dry, it's his loss. Allie gave him a coquettish smile. Her dad laughed until his gasps turned into a rough coughing fit. His face turned a light red before he finally stopped, his eyes watering from the need for a breath. You okay, Dad? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I just... I just need some water, he said, standing up to grab a cup from off the table and fill it in the bathroom sink. The door to Allie's room opened again. Allie's mother walked in and immediately started to weep at the sight of her lying in the hospital bed. She ran over to give her a hug. Oh, my poor girl! She cried into Allie's shoulder and kissed her on the forehead. Are you all right? Are you hurt? No, Mom, I died. You're talking to a ghost. Allie replied with a playfully sarcastic tone. Allie's mother stood upright and gestured to her father. You see how she talks to me? She gets it from you, I hope you know. Poor thing nearly gets killed by a bus and this is how she greets me? Allie laughed at her mother's response. It's good to see you too, Mom. I'm so glad you're okay. That bus driver should have watched where he was going. Let her breathe, Anne, before you break something that was meant to heal said Allie's father, sipping his cup of water from the bathroom doorway. Have they been taking care of you? Are they keeping a close watch on you? I'm fine, Mom. Doctor says it looks worse than it really was. They say I must have barely missed the front of the bus and passed right under it. The defibrillator did more damage than the bus. He said I should be out of here in a day or two. I've already made arrangements for you to come stay with us for a little while. I called your work this morning and told them what happened. Your boss, Krista, is such a sweetheart. She said she would be more than happy to let you take off whatever time you needed. Allie's mom lifted the blankets up from the end of the bed and placed them over Allie's lap. (laughs) I'm sure she would. She probably thinks I did it on purpose. Allie muttered. Allie's dad began coughing into his hand. He took another drink of water. (coughs) Allie's mother turned to help, but he waved her aside. He opened the door and walked out into the hall. (coughs) Allie could hear her dad struggling to breathe after each cough, desperate to clear his throat. He should be at home, said Allie as he closed the door. He wanted to come, said Allie's mother, watching the door. You mean the world to him? How is he? Worse. He had to argue with his doctor to let him come. The doctor said it would be a bad idea, but he came anyway. Are you guys staying long? No, just until tomorrow. I know we said just a weekend visit over the phone, but he's been needing some company. Whatever time he gets at home, he spends wishing he could be working with you in the garage. I figured you coming to stay with us would not only give us a chance to keep an eye on you and help you look for a place you could live back home at, but also allow you some time to spend with him. Allie smiled. I'd like that. I'll have Carly till then. I have a meeting to go to on Monday, but I'll fly home right after that. Allie's mother looked over at the flowers David dropped off on the table. She picked them up and sniffed them. Did David bring these in? Unfortunately. Allie replied. Did you give him another chance? Nope. He just snuck in here to argue with me. Allie's mom shook her head. Well, I still say you should reconsider. I'm going to go check on your dad real fast. Then I'll be back in to check on you. I'm glad you're okay, sweetheart. Allie's mother leaned in and kissed her on top of her forehead. I love you too, Mom. Allie replied, waiting for her mother to walk out of the room. 
She rolled her eyes and looked back to the window as the door closed. The rain outside her window had stopped as the clouds began to clear. Yet the clouded memories from her adventures remained. Each detailed memory still lingering in her mind like they had all happened yesterday, as yesterday had now happened weeks ago. Hey everyone, this is Margaret Ashley, the voice of Ali's mom from Sam Adventures Across Time. If you've enjoyed your adventure across time so far, be sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash TS Wheeland. With your support, you'll gain early access to the next chapter of the book, and even a copy of the book itself. With your contribution, more thrilling and inspiring audiobooks can be made every day through the hard work, time, and dedication of voice actors and artists all across the world, including myself, all working together. From all of us here in the world between worlds, we'd like to thank you for joining us on our adventures. <laughs>